Hector Clavijo, head coach, Champagnat Catholic. Head coach of Keyshawn Brown. Lightning in the bottle. So, we met Keyshawn uh, randomly one day. Came into the school, met with the administration, and and, and enrolled at the school. And, and I had no idea. I had no idea he was coming. I had no idea about about anything. Um, and all of a sudden, admin calls me, shows up at, the, at practice, and says, "Hey, there's a kid we got accepted, um, and he's, he's, he wants to be an athlete." I said, "Okay, great." Kid shows up with his father, and here he is, five nine, 160 pounds. I'm like, "All right, cool, wide receiver." Or DB. And next thing you know, the kids are like, hey, coach, that's Keyshawn, that's Keyshawn. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but I don't I don't pay attention to other teams besides ours. So I'm just like, okay, well, who's Keyshawn? They're like, oh, coach, you got to see him, coach. He's, he's the man, coach. I said, all right, cool. Well, let's see what he's got. So we go through, and once he gets all his paperwork in with, like, physicals and stuff like that, he's in there, he comes to practice, and, and we start rolling, and I'm like, Oh, this kid's pretty good and I'm like man you know what let me check out his film so I check out his film from before and I was like man this kid's legit like this is a dude and one thing leads to another we show up and you know going through practice and stuff and he's just balling you know he's balling in practice he's killing me on the obviously me being a defensive guy he's killing me on defense and I'm like man it's frustrating um and next thing you know, we you show up to the Chaminade game and he gets a few touches and, and, and he has a big kickoff return. And I'm like, all right, yeah, this kid, this kid's a real deal. You know, this kid's special. And first couple games went by and he didn't really touch the ball a lot. Um, and, and I know the OC wanted to get him the ball, but I think there wasn't that that chemistry yet with the quarterback and, and even the quarterback with the, with the OC. And I think, I think that was all a process. And um, as we went through with that, as that got better and better, his touches increased, and realistically, he didn't need many. I mean, he just, every time we touched the ball, it was a big play. You know, I remember him taking the the Day Christian game, he took that RPO, you know, pop pass over the middle for, you know, 70 yards, and everything after that was just those big type plays. Um, and the OC was like, you know what, we gotta get him the ball more. And even when he was frustrated, it kind of tells you what kind of kid he is. You could tell he was frustrated, we moved him inside, he was used to being an outside guy. And, um, and I said to him one day in practice, I said, hey man, you want me to go talk to coach and see if we can kind of move you outside and we could put Malik inside. Malik's kind of used to that, that role. And he was like, nah, nah, coach. Um, I'm gonna do whatever's best for the team. And if I gotta stay inside, I'm gonna stay inside and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get mine. And I was like, okay, cool, that's, that's, a, that's a pro answer, you know? He wasn't selfish. He didn't want to go back outside just because that's what he was used to. And he, you know, I said, all right, cool. So I went and told the OC, I said, hey man, you know, what do we got to do to get him the ball more? He was like, coach, I got a plan. He goes, trust me, watch this. And then sure enough, from that point forward, he started getting the ball seven, eight times a game, 100 plus yards a game. And he ended up, he finished with, you know, uh, led a team in catches, led a team in receiving touchdowns and, um, and receiving yards. And, um, and that was history, you know, from a football standpoint. And, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, scouts call and say, hey, coach, well, how big is he? I go, coach, it don't matter how big he is. You know, the kid's 5'9", he's 160 pounds. He ain't getting any bigger. You know, he's not going to be six foot tomorrow. You could put weight on him, but what matters to me is a couple of things. One, phenomenal character. He's a freaking great kid. Two, he's team first. Whatever we need him to do, he's going to do it. And three, his IQ. His IQ is just so high. I mean, I, I hear him talking to the OC and the way they start talking about plays and routes and how to set things up and, and how to do things. And that's stuff that, that I only hear from NFL guys. You know, you know, the elite college guys talk about those things. He got a, a grasp of the offense. He knew his plays right away. Um, you know, he came in. And, and to me, that's what's special. So anybody that, that, that takes this kid to the next level is going to get that. You're going to get a guy that's going to show up day one, do everything you ask, grab the playbook real quick, and, and be an immediate impact. And he's going to play special teams, and return the kicks, return the punts, you know, and he could do so much on offense. You know, he could, 
he can jet sweeps, reverses, you know, spot passes, um, you know, keep him keep him in the slot off the line of scrimmage and make a move. I mean, he could do so much. He's so quick. He's lightning in the bottle. Um, I mean, he's just special, man. He's real special. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to see him at the next level, what he's going to do. Um, I mean, he's the real deal. He's the real deal. Um, you know, and, and, and people talk about Malik on our team now and how special he is. I mean, when you look at this kid, I mean, they're, 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 they're identical. And they're about the same size. Um, they have two different skill sets, but both just as special, you know. Um, and uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to, to, to coach him. Um, I just love his attitude. His attitude, his, his demeanor. He doesn't say much. He's, he's like super quiet. He's chill, laid back. Whenever he, I talk to him, he just smiles. Yes, sir. No, sir. Um, you know, and, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see him at the next level. And uh, and uh, he's going to be the real deal. Yeah, 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 yeah you brought him out to yeah, the park yeah. in the wheelchair. Hey, I ain't even want to bring him It was team. hard to watch and see him in the wheelchair. Everybody yeah. felt like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, he really is hurt. Like, uh, Jack Sawyer with Power Player Sports, uh, my business partner, Sam Madison, you know, been doing this thing for a long time, coaching. You know, I coach Optimus for, uh, it's been a while, man, a long time. Especially over at Miramar, started over over there at Miami Lakes. And the first time I saw Keyshawn, man, it was, uh, well, it was a game. I was coaching the, I was coaching the pound above Keyshawn, and Keyshawn was on the lower pound. And they were playing against uh, Miami Lakes Optimus. And, uh, Miami Leaks took the lead. Everybody kept saying, you guys got to watch this number three. You got to watch this number three. I said, let me see what this number three they talking about. So the very next play, our coach for our, that younger team kicks the ball off. It bounces. Keyshawn picks the ball up, and he sprays, takes it to the house. I was like, yo, that kid's special, man. I said, he was, he was as good as advertised. And that team from Miami Leaks was a really, really good team. And then from there on, you know, we started doing our all-star games. Power player sports it was called Aaron Athletics back then. Myself in uh, Sam Madison. And uh, pretty much every year, Keyshawn was on the All-Star team and, and it was always one of the leaders. Then, you know, I got to watch him play when West Park, when he left West Park here, then they became the West Park Hurricanes down the street in the AYFL. And I watched him do some amazing things at one of our kickoff classics. It was against uh, for a lot of the Hurricanes. It was a game that ended in 6 nothing. but Keyshawn started out as the running back by the end of the game, he was the quarterback because the quarterback got hurt. But he did a, he did an amazing job with those guys, man. And it, I just said, man, it's, he was the littlest guy on the field, but he was the quickest and the fastest and, and getting it down. Uh, you know, then I watched him play. You know, at, he went over to Miramar Wolverines, and I watched him play. We had, a, like I said, we had a kickoff classic. Uh, when he got 12 on the 12U, we had our kickoff classic at Archbishop McCarthy High School, and he was playing against a very, very good team loaded with kids like – Travis Jeter and all those guys over there at uh, Carroll City. And uh, we, the, the kickoff class was only a, like a half, uh, run a clock type thing. But the game was like 0-0. And uh, Coach Toro, everybody know him, Coach Ro for Chaminade, which was the coach of Carroll City at that time, he uh, he called the play, and it was 0-0. So Keyshawn jumped the play, knocked the ball down. They called the penalty, so they got the last play again. Lo and behold, Ro ran the same play again. Keyshawn jumped it. Took it to the house, won the game. Everybody was like, man, why did you try that young man? I'm, he was still the smallest dude out there, but he made it happen. Just to watch him grow from seven years old to now going on 18, to seeing him take that journey, man. And that's been a long journey for him, I can't lie. I was there I was there when he broke his leg against West Pines. You know, it wasn't, it was like one of those things that you were like, oh my God, it's, it, it might be over for this kid. Then again, I was there when at uh, Plantation when he was playing in the seven on seven tournament. He jumped up for a play or whatever. It was a bang bang play. He fell down and broke his wrist. You know, I was like, I was like, is this kid cursed or what? And you know, he struggled. He went through it, but he always came out of it. And he came out of it better. So it was just amazing to see what this young man has done. I'm looking forward to seeing him on the next level in college. You know, because I know he's gonna do some amazing things, man. He just got to get the right opportunity. And once he get that opportunity, as they say, it's gonna be a wrap. This is where it all started at. McTill Park, West Park Hurricanes. You know, I first got introduced to uh, Fish and Roy, you know, and, you know, they asked me if, you know, my son wanted to play football. And I'm like, man, he was too small to play. And, you no, know, I gave it a shot. He was on the field. 
getting dragged by legs and stuff like that. So, um, you know what I mean? But the year after that, we came back, we did it again, and I started to see the progression in him growing and stuff like that. And then, you know, six-year-old led to the same thing, had 38 touchdowns, uh, seven. He had 41 touchdowns, won the state championship, went 16-0. and um, You know what I mean? Like I say, he was ahead of his time. He always been the smallest kid on the field. But like I say, he was he was quicker, he was faster, he was smarter. Um, you know, and I instilled that in him, you know, in the front yard, backyard type of stuff. Came out here, put in extra work, I invested in him. I remember coming out here, everybody was bigger than me. I knew I had to have something over him. I had to be either faster, smarter. When I, when I broke my leg, I remember I was on the ground, I was screaming. I was looking at everybody else's faces. Everybody was crying. I mean, just as a parent aspect, you know, I coach, but as a parent aspect, that 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 ain't sit well with. Me. But seeing my kid laying on the ground like that, that's like, I mean, who want to see their kid laying on the ground? You know what I mean? And then in pain, and then you know his mom like, nah, don't show why for him, don't show why for him like that, don't let him see you like that. So you know, I had to come to his side. You know what I mean? And. You know, comfort him while he on the ground and stuff like that. But that, I mean, to see your child on the ground, that ain't a good feeling at all, at all. Doctors told me if I break it one more time, uh, football could be done for me. And I broke it again. And I was thinking everything, uh, but my dad told me it was like, just keep grinding, it don't mean nothing. The orthopedist said, you know what I mean? It's it's like a 50-50 chance that he'll be able to, you know, he might not be able to play football. And in my head, I'm thinking like, yeah, right. You know what I mean? I built something special. And that was just it. It, it was just me just, you know what I mean? Going, him, me and him going through that process and stuff like that. I just, like I said, I encouraged him every day, every day. But it wasn't really about football at that point. It was about, you know, let's heal up. You know what I mean? You know, trust the process, and we took it from them. You know what I mean? But other than that, I ain't believe nothing them orthopedists said, man. I looked at it like, okay, it's a setback. Keep on going, keep on pushing, and guess what I did? I, we woke up the next day, and we went through the healing process. Like I said, you gotta trust the process, you know what I mean? We trust the process, we kept it moving. When, when, when that cast got off, I mean, you know, we did some little wrist exercise and stuff like that, but other than that, man, we, we, we hit the field again. Yeah. Just keep grinding. That's what I did. I kept grinding. I came back the next year and did what I was doing. Just kept on grinding. I'm playing hard. Just shocked everybody. Everybody thought I was going to be done. Thought I was just, I wasn't going to be the same, basically. Everybody thought I wasn't going to be the same. I came back, proved everybody wrong. Year after year. Oh, Taylor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's on. He's on. Colleges should know that I'm hungry. I'm a dog. I do whatever it takes to be great, basically. Uh, working hard. Like I say, I, I put it in him since he was four years old, and that's what I was brought up on. So it's like, I'm not gonna give up like that. Nah, I'm, nah, that ain't me. I felt like Keyshawn was undervalued because he's not six foot, six one, six two. But I'ma sound arrogant about this. My son 5'9", and he could do exactly what a six one, six two dude can do, even more. I definitely feel like my size plays a big factor. But keep grinding, doing what I've been doing since I was four. Keep grinding. That's all I know, keep grinding, basically. Give him my opportunity. And he'll prove, he gonna prove you wrong. He did it, he been persistent, be consistent all these years since seven years old. And you know what I mean? I mean, he ready for it. 
Ain't no stage too big for him. I feel like I'm undervalued still, even though the, even the numbers that I put up, uh, it seemed like they looking for uh, a name instead of like, like who putting up numbers, like who, who doing what they supposed to do. Not taking nothing away from nobody, but the numbers I put up, I should be yeah. top schools, basically, top schools. Nothing less than that, but I'm getting offers, I'm getting looked at, but it's not, it's not what, I, what I should be at. He's, I should be looked at how these uh, five stars, four stars, big receivers, how, how they be getting looked at. Definitely another hurdle I got to get over. Uh, but I keep grinding to somebody, somebody going to take the chance, somebody going to look at me. Uh, when I get there, I just do what I do. Ain't nothing else I could do.